Displaying data. Objective of this lesson to use box and whisker plots, pictographs, and line graphs to display data. Let's take a look at this example. Students at Horace Mann Middle School were concerned about the speed of traffic on the street in front of their school. The student council asked the city's traffic engineering division to place two radar speed sensors with large digital displays near the street. One display allowed vehicles traveling west to see their speed, and the other was positioned for ve vehicles traveling east to see their speed. Okay, so the sample of the speeds in miles per hour of vehicles traveling west were 25, 35, okay, uh, 27, 22, 34, 40, 20, and so on and so forth, all the way to 30. And speeds of vehicles traveling east, okay, samples of uh, the speeds are 26, 22, 31, all the way to 30 miles per hour, okay? So, Again, if you just look at these numbers, these numbers won't mean or won't make a lot of sense until you organize it, okay? And one way to organize it is put it into a box and whisker plot. The student council voted to ask the city council to erect a stop sign at either end of the block. When they made their presentation, they wanted to make a display of the data so that, so that the city council members would understand it quickly and easily. They chose a box and whisker plot because it summarizes the data using median, the upper and lower quartiles, and the highest and lowest extreme values. Again, when you use a box and whisker plot, this is what it gives the reader. It summarizes data using the median and upper and lower quartiles, and the highest, and lowest, or extreme values. Okay. So, a good way to present this or to organize the data is to use a box and whisker plot. Let's see what they did. The speeds of the vehicles traveling west are displayed in stem leaf plot. At the right, the median is marked by a box and the quartiles are circled. The upper extreme is 40 and the lower extreme is 19. Here's how to construct the box and whisker plot to display the data. So again, let's uh, look at this one. This is our stem and leaf plot right here. And if you look at our stem and leaf plot, okay, the, the one in, in, in the rectangle or in the box is uh, the median. That's our median right here. Okay. And this, uh, the ones in the circles are your upper and lower quartiles. Uh, this is your upper quartile right here, okay, and this is your lower quartile right here, okay, and at the same time, we talked about the upper and lower extreme. The upper extreme is nothing more than your greatest value, and the lower extreme is nothing more than your least value. So our upper extreme is 40, which is this one, and lower extreme, which is 19, which is that one right there. Okay, now here's to construct a box and whisker plot to display the data. Step number one. Step number one is draw a number line for the range of the speeds. Okay, above the number line, mark points for the extreme, median, and upper values. Oh, sorry, and quartile values. Okay, so let's make a number line. And this is our number line. And we marked our median, which is, in this case, 25 our upper quartile which is 34 and our lower quartile which is 22 these are our circles right here 22 and 34 and the median being uh, 25 okay our upper extreme is 40 and our lower extreme is 19 okay from there we go to step number two after marking with uh, 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 our quartiles in the upper and lower extreme. Step number two is simply this, okay? Draw a box that contains the quartile values, okay? That means these are your quartile values, lower quartile, upper quartile, those are your quartile values, okay? Uh, draw a vertical line through the median 
finally extend the whiskers from each quartile to the extreme data points. So what did we do? This is what we did for our uh, box and whisker plot. Okay, look at our uh, lower quartile, look at our median, look, our, look at our upper quartile. We created a rectangle or a box to enclose those and we created a vertical line through the median. Basically what we did is that we simply got this one Okay, and we created a box right there, okay? And that's how we created our box. And it says there, extend the whiskers from each quartile to the extreme value po data points. So we simply got that point, extended it there, simply got that point and extended it there. And that's how we got this particular box and whisker plot okay and finally this display the box and whisker plot separates the data into fourths each having an equal amount of data for example the whisker from 9 to 22 19 to 22 contains 25 percent of the data okay what it's saying is this it's simply saying that if you have your box and whisker plot it doesn't matter how small or how big the box or the whisker is this quartile will contain 25% of the data. This is also 25% of the data, 25% of the data, and 25% of the data. Again, the size of the box and, and, and the length of the whisker okay, will not determine the, the amount of data in each of those quartiles. Okay? It divides them to four equal parts okay it's important to understand that when you are creating this box and whisker plot let's look, take a look at exa this example and let's see how it all works out use the box and whisker plot below to answer the questions okay and you have a box and whisker plot about ages of volunteers at a homeless shelter so we will interpret this box and whisker plot to be able to answer the questions a b and c what is the range of the youngest volunteer? Okay, when you say the youngest volunteer, you're asking for the least value. Okay, so when you're talking about the least value, in this case, the least value or the lower extreme would be 45. So the answer for this one is 45. Okay, question B half of the volunteers are under what age? Okay, so again, if we know that the box and whisker plot is divided into 25% on each side, okay, or in each quartile, so each of them is 25%, meaning this is 25%, that's 25%, this is 25%, 25%, and 25%. If that's the case, it's saying half of volunteers of what, uh, are under what age? we are talking about 50% because that's half. So half of 50% uh, is on the below the 60 age range, okay? Because that's 25 plus 25 equals 50. And the answer would be 60 because six, uh, that would be, that, that is where 50% of the data will, will lie. What percent of the volunteers are over 70%? So again, just looking at our box and whisker plot and the percentages of the number of data in each quartile, we know that there are 25%, okay? And that's how we answer or we interpret that box and whisker plot in answering all three questions. Let's take a look at the next example. Before we do that, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about outliers. Sometimes the data will have such a great variation that one or both of the extreme values will be far beyond the other data. Data that are more than 1.5 times the interquartile range from the quartiles are called outliers. Okay? A good example of outliers is in the last lesson when we talked about the number of gold medals the United States won. If you notice, in 1980, we had zero. In 1984, we had 
a jump to 83. Okay, and those are considered outliers because they are more than 1.5 the interquartile range, or in ge by general definition, okay, they will be far beyond the other data. Okay, so uh, it, they vary more than the other set. Okay. Okay, let's uh, let's see how this works. Draw a box and whisker plot for the speed data of the cars traveling east. Okay, again, these are the speeds traveling east arranged from least to greatest. That's the first step. The median is 29, the lower quartile is 22, and the upper quartile is 32. How did we determine that? Because median will be the middle number, so that's easy enough. The lower quartile is 22. Why? Because there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sets, and now this becomes the middle, so this becomes your lower quartile. Okay, this becomes your median, and since there are also five uh, uh, five pieces of data in the upper half, this becomes our upper quartile, which is 32. Okay, draw a box to show the median of the quartiles, and then we draw this box right here. This is what you end up with. That's your median. This is your upper quartile, and this is your lower quartile. That's step number one. Okay. After doing step number one, we do step number two, and in step number two, okay, we get the interquartile range. Again, remember interquartile range is, okay, a view of interquartile range, IQR is equal to upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So the interquartile range is 10 because 32 minus 22 will give you 10, okay. What it's saying is that data more than 1.5 times 10 for the quartiles are outliers. Okay, so we get our interquartile range and multiply it by 1.5. That gives us 15. Okay, so what do we do with the 15? This is what we do with the 15. We get the number 15, which is 1.5 times our interquartile range, and find the limits of our outliers. Okay, and to find the limits of our outliers, we subtract 15 from a lower quartile, which now becomes 22 minus 15, which is 7. Okay, and I'll give you a formula for this in trying to find the limits of our outlier to find our lower limit. Okay, we need to get your lower quartile and subtract 1.5 times your i. Q R. Whoa, it fits. Okay, so that's the formula for finding the lower limit. Okay, and let's look at our upper limit. Add 15 to the our upper quartile. This becomes our upper limit. And our upper limit, I'm just make it a UL so that it will fit now. Our upper limit will be equal to our upper quartile plus 1. 0.5 times our interquartile range. That's the formula for finding our upper limit. And our upper limit in this case is 47. Our lower limit is 7. Okay? The next step after that. Okay? Next step after that. The limits for the outliers in 747. There is one uh, uh, outlier in the data, which is 50. If you look at our data, okay? This one goes beyond our limit right here, okay? 50 goes beyond our limit. That means 50 is an outlier because our upper limit is only 47, and 50 is above 47. If you look at our lower limit, 7, nothing goes below 7, so we don't have an outlier in the lower limit, okay? So what do we do? There's one outlier, plot the outlier with an asterisk or a star, draw the whiskers to the extreme data that are not outliers. So we modify our box and whisker, uh, meaning that instead of uh, creating a whisker all the way to 50, we only create the whisker all the way to 36. Why 36? Because 36 is our new upper extreme. Okay. 
Since 50 is an outlier, we will not draw the whisker all the way to 50. We just draw it all the way to 36. And we put a star next to our outlier right there. Okay? So we put a star next to our outlier, okay? Or an asterisk, no matter what, what we call that thing. And that becomes our outlier. Okay? I can erase oh I can erase that one. Okay. So our upper limit or on our outlier will be that star right there, which is 50. Okay. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at letter B. The speed limit in front of the school is 20 miles per hour. Make a double box box and whisker plot of the east and west speeds to convince the city council that a stop sign is needed. So a double box and whisker is nothing more than a box and whisker on top of each other. The first one traveling east, we know for a fact that 50 is an outlier and this is the box and whisker plot from letter A. Okay, and letter B, this is how we create our box and whisker plot traveling west. And uh, uh, after computing for our upper and lower limit, we found out that there are no outliers. So there are no stars on either end of our box and whisker plot. And if you notice, okay, the sizes of the whiskers vary now, uh, and the sizes of the boxes vary as well, okay? But that uh, still indicates that 25% of the data still belongs in each of those quartiles. So if you look at these carefully, what do you notice about the box and whisker plot? And if you compare those boxes and whiskers, okay, this is what we can conclude. Almost all the speeds of the vehicles traveling west exceed the speed limit, and more than three-fourths of the vehicles traveling east exceed the speed limit. Stop signs at both ends of the block should slow traffic because cars would have to stop twice. And that's one good way of showing the city council that we, uh, they need a stop sign to be able to uh, control the speeds of the cars traveling in front of the school. Okay, and that's one useful way of using box and whisker plot okay let's talk about this one now and let's talk about other types of graphs other statistical graphs that are often used to present data include line graphs pictographs circle graphs and comparative graphs look at this one this is what we call a line graph remember when we discuss line graphs that when you talk about a line graph it uh, shows how values change over a period of Time. So when you talk about a period of time, okay, a line graph would be the best one to use. The line graph at the left shows the number of viewers on football Monday nights from 1970 to 1984. Okay, period of time would be your line graph. Next one we're going to talk about is a pictograph. Look at these carefully, and if you notice, it shows pictures of pictures in the graph. And that's why it's called a pictograph. Now, when do you use a pictograph? Okay. Well, pictographs use pictures of illustrations to show how specific quantities compare. Each symbol rep uh, represents a convenient number of items to display the data. A pictograph at the right shows how much different age groups in the United States spend on sporting apparel. Okay. So if you look, if, if uh, when you use a pictograph, you're just basically comparing quantities. Okay, it's convenient and it's attractive because it shows pictures, and uh, it's very colorful. Another graph that we're going to talk about is a circle graph, and this is when you use a circle graph. It shows how parts are related to a whole. So when you are comparing parts to a whole you use a circle graph, okay? In this case, for example, the circle graph shows how electricity is generated in the United States, okay? And this is the entire United States. That's your whole, okay? And these are parts of your whole nuclear 21.2%, gas 9%, and so on and so forth. The last graph we're going to talk about are comparative graphs, and comparative graphs are nothing more than just bar graphs, okay? Compar 
comparative graphs like the double bar graph are used to show trends. They're usually used to compare results of similar groups. So when you're comparing quantities, okay, so when you're comparing quantities, you use a comparative graph. The graph at the right shows the temperatures of winter of 1995 compared to a 100-year average. It is very useful because if you look at the, the, the graph right here, it shows you right away, okay, where the highs are and where, where the lows are and in what places the highs and lows are located. Okay, let's take a look at this example number three. A newspaper wants to display high temperatures the past week. Should they use a box and whisker plot, a, a line graph, pictograph, or a circle graph, or a double bar graph? Okay, since we are trying to compare quantities, we're trying to compare high temperatures for the past week, okay, but at the same time, we are talking about time, okay, the best graph that we need to use would be a line graph because you are now talking about time, okay, the line graph would give the reader a clear picture of what temperatures were and changes in temperature. Okay, so when you see time, line graph would be always be the best graph to use. Okay, lessons done. Type, uh, type a summary of what you've learned by responding to the objectives of the lesson. Type a question you might want to ask in class about this lesson. Thank you.